Hello and welcome to my channel. Before I get started, if you haven't already, please subscribe, and if you enjoy this video, then please feel free to give it a like. Now, in this video, I'm going to be discussing the first book of the Cycle of Fire trilogy by Janny Wirtz. Now, this is one I had just picked up because, A, the cover is awesome, and I'll put it up a little bit bigger here on the screen here in a second so that you can see it closer, but it was really cool. I hadn't actually ever heard of Janny Wirtz before. But it looked cool, and I really like being able to get the omnibus ones like this, where it's the entire trilogy all in one volume. So for me, that is a definite win. So in this story, we have a setting uh, in a land called Keithland, which uh, I'll be honest, kind of annoyed me that that was the name of the area. But Keithland, which is mostly a whole bunch of collection of small islands. So it's a very much a seafaring people, a lot of small villages of fishing and we get a lot of different voyages in sea, boats big and small, pirates of course, uh, naval battles, that sort of thing, a lot going on there. And then we're introduced pretty quickly into an interesting form of magic that's highly elemental, has a lot to do with controlling the weather or fire, or as we learn a little bit later, there are some other parts of this softer magic system that include what's called dream weaving, where we also get to learn a bit more about that. The base premise of the trilogy in general is that there is an ancient sorcerer who is called the Storm Warden, which is actually the name of this first book. I don't think I actually mentioned that. Yes, Storm Warden is the name of the first book uh, of the Cycle of Fire. And he long ago had worked with another sorcerer to lock away these really powerful evil demons and stop them from destroying the world, basically. But the other sorcerer had turned on him, and so now Anskir, who is a sorcerer of weather, and then Ivane, who was a fire lord, they ended up no longer being cool with Ivane, uh, betraying him, and Anskir put on a guise on Ivane that should he ever call him, or if he's no longer living, his heir has to come to his summons. Pretty quickly we see uh, that Anskir once again is betrayed, forces are working against him at the beginning of the current time, and he is forced to put that call into place, but a very unlikely uh, person ends up getting that call, and the only surviving heir of Ivain is a kind of small sickly boy who lives in a village on the part of the mainland very far away, and we also see with that the idea that new heroes are going to arise. We also see a young girl from the village that Anskir was in, and her, God, her name's Tan, her and then her brother, Emian, both getting thrown into this too, and we kind of have that feeling of new heroes and possibly new villains arising in the land. Now, this has a very classic fantasy feel in quite a lot of ways, but there is also more under the surface and a lot of things are more than meets the eye. I don't want to give anything away because you get a fair amount into the first book before there's some really big reveals that are just kind of casually thrown at you. And I thought it was really interesting and unexpected from the book so far, especially with how it felt. So some deeper elements there. This isn't just your run-of-the-mill fantasy. It kind of starts that way to lull you in. But I really enjoyed how quickly it gets started. And what it comes down to, the name of the trilogy, The Cycle of Fire, is basically this transformation process that somebody who is to become a Fire Lord has to go through and be trained by the mythical and mysterious Very in order to come to fruition. And in fact, although very, very few have ever trained with the Very, the most powerful magic users are those that are trained by them. And so that's kind of the, the premise that we're set up. In the first book, we're kind of getting the characters moving, and we do actually get to really dig into each of the characters a fair amount. We uh, spend the most time in the first half with Tan. She's a girl who was crippled when she was younger in an accident on the island that she was from, and she's very loyal to Anskir, who was kind of like a surrogate father to her and her brother after her father had died. And so when he is betrayed and accused of crime, she sticks with him, and that ends up putting her on a path toward potentially a very powerful magical future. 
her brother Emian, who also was at one time very close to Anskir, more so as the, the tortured soul. He was basically responsible for his father's death on a fishing boat, even though it was in no way intentional, it was also an accident. But because of that and other things in his life, he just feels this incredible anger. And so we explore that while it's exploited by somebody else and we see the potential villain that he's becoming while his sister Tan is very, very empathetic and compassionate and is trying to help him and not wanting to give up on him despite all that's going on. We also spend a lot of time with Karen's son, Jarek, who is actually the heir of Ivan Firelord and his journey from being the boy who can't do anything and has absolutely no self-confidence to getting past that in some ways, realizing he can do things, but still feeling like he really has no control over his future and what's happening around him. So some of the, the base plot lines of, you know, the young hero who's not prepared has to go on are some things we've seen before, but explored in a little bit of a different way here. And like I said, without getting into major, major spoilers for the book, uh, it's hard to really describe those under the surface deeper elements that do make this a pretty unique story. And overall, I really enjoyed it and will be continuing with the series. It's not terribly long. None of them are. It's the, the whole, you know, the omnibus version, if you look, is uh, about as thick as, you know, like a Stormlight book, maybe. So uh, it didn't take uh, too terribly long to read, but really had a lot uh, going on in it. And there were some slow parts with really building. It felt like we, we started off pretty strong. We had some slow parts in kind of the middle to late end uh, before getting some good action going forward, but really a lot set up for book two. And I'm, I'm interested to see where this series goes. And on just a side note, after starting to read this, I ended up finding out that Janie Ritz actually has a 10 book series, uh, much longer and apparently also very underrated and unknown fantasy series. So if I end up liking the Cycle of Fire as a whole once I finish it, and I'm liking book one so far with having finished that, uh, I definitely may have to check that out and unfortunately destroy my TBR with another really long series. With that, that is my review of Storm Warden, first book of the Cycle of Fire by Janie Wirtz. Uh, if you have read this or end up reading it, uh, like I said, this seems to be a pretty unknown not particularly popular book. Uh, I didn't find a whole lot about Janie Wirtz as an author in general when I kind of looked up some information on her just because I was curious why I had never heard of her. So definitely let me know your thoughts or if you end up reading it, your thoughts there. But it's, it's always nice to talk about lesser known fantasy books, especially ones that I did enjoy. That is my review though. Once again, please subscribe if you have not already. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like.